Hello everybody, here's my mama and my papa here, and they got a Sunday message for y'all today, and they're both going to be reading for y'all, but I hope y'all enjoy it, they're going to pray for y'all first, and this is a prayer book for any prayer requests that's in the comments or in letters or anything, but they're going to pray for y'all now, I'll let them take it from here. Okay, welcome to our Sunday message, and like uh, Corey said, we're going to be praying first, and then we'll go into our message. Amen. Let's go and pray. Father, Lord, we ask you, God, to answer all these requests that's in this book, Lord. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we know ain't nothing too big or too or too far away that you can't reach it and heal it and answer that, repair, that re request. And, you know, you're the same God you was 2,000 years ago when you raised the dead, Jesus. healed the lame, the blind, and you're still doing it today. When you're doing it through us, we pray to you in Jesus' name. And, I, and we believe yes, that Lord, we have Jesus what we're name. going to ask for, and we receive it according yes. to your will. Father, we ask you to answer all these requests. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. 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 That's right. There's nothing impossible for God to do, you know. Amen. He can do little things, and he can do big things. He can do all things uh, because he is Jesus, uh, you know, and he's there. When we call upon him, he will answer our prayer. Uh, so we need to always stay close to him. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be talking about how Satan bounds us up, you know. And I'm going to be reading about Lazarus, how he was bound to put in the grave and how he heard Jesus' voice and he come forth. You know, if you're out there and you're lost if, and you're bound up with Satan because that's what he does, he bounds you up, make you think things that's not so. Uh, you don't believe in Jesus, you're uh, on drugs, drinking around and everything. You don't know where you're going to be from one minute to the next. All you have to do is just listen and call on Jesus because he's there with his arms outreached for you. But I'm going to be uh, reading about Lazarus today. And that's in John chapter 11 uh, in the New Testament. And it says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, um, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Um, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Uh, then after that saith he to his disciples, uh, Let us go unto Judea again. Uh, his disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. Uh, but if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent you might you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Denimus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them um, concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. Uh, but Mary sat still in the house. Uh, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Um, but I know that even now, whithersoever thou, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the re resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. 
He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Martha, or then when Mary was come unto Jesus, where, uh, come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, and was troubled, and said, Where hath you laid him? Then said, he, then said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the, the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto him, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead come forth, bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Amen. Loose him and let him go. And that's what we need to be praying today, that God will loose the uh, bands that Satan has on the sinners out there, that they will open their eyes and see and get all them bounds off them, uh, and, and turn to the Lord, you know, because time is too short for them just to be playing around. You need to get the bounds off. Even Christians sometimes is bound up, you know, bound up with fear or bound up with some kind of uh, uh, delusional stuff, you know, in their head. Uh, you know, a lot of things that they're bound up with. If you're bound up with something, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And say, get behind me, Satan. I am loose from thee and I will not be bound by thee. I am going to uh, the Lord and he will take care of me. You know, God is a good God and he loves you. And he will loose you from Satan's uh, grip on you. Uh, if Satan has a grip on you, ask the Lord to help you to remove that. Rebuke Satan. You know, he can, when you say Jesus' name, he can't stay there. You know, he has to be uh, gone. Right. I remember one time when I was uh, first uh, got saved. Um, we was in church, and uh, we was always taught about uh, Satan, how he has a grip on you, or he tries to put fear up on you or something. Well, I was in my house mopping here one day. It was, kids was in school. Milton was working, and uh, I was uh, mopping the front room, and I turned around to come back through the dining room, and there was this um, uh, demon there. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you leave now. And he just vanished like that, you know. Uh, Satan will try to put fear on you. But all you have to do is say, leave in the name of Jesus. And he Amen. has to leave. And you can also rebuke sickness the same way. You can say, get out of here, sickness. I'll have no part of you. I'm Jesus' child, and he takes care of me, and he will heal me. You know, and I'm going to, um, I think I'll uh, do something in um, all the commentary here. I seen something the other day. I didn't even mark it down, though, when I was reading but anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to read anything in it. Um, 
Can't remember where I read it at. But anyway, don't be bound by Satan. You know, tell him to get out of here and leave you alone. Uh, because anytime you start to read, you know yourself, you get sleepy and want to go to sleep. You know, but you have to tell Satan to get out. And you'll, he'll put doubt in your mind and make you think things that's not so. You've got to tell him to get out and leave you alone. Uh, that you're not going to be bound by his lies and stuff, you know. And Jesus is right there to loose you. All you have to do if you don't know the Lord is say, uh, Jesus, forgive me. Uh, I want to be your child, and he'll be right there to forgive Amen. you and take you in to be his child. That's right. You know, God is good, and he don't want to see nobody go to hell. He, do, he wants everybody to go to heaven. But, you know, like I've said before, it's their choice, and it's your choice. You know, choose the good. Don't choose the evil. God is good, and he'll take you to heaven where there's joy and peace. But Satan is a liar, and he uh, wants to take you to hell with him because he knows that he's going to hell. He knows that he's going to take as many people with him as he can. Uh, but you need to just say, get behind me, Satan. I'm not going with you. Uh, I'm going with Jesus Christ, the one that loved me, the one that died for me. Uh, you know, God died on the cross for all sinners so that they could go to heaven if they would repent. It's your choice, though. He died there. He loved you so much that he stretched out his arms on the cross for you that day. And uh, all you have to do is say, I want to be with you, Jesus. Forgive me of my sins and go and do what's right. Read your word. Go to church and do good, you know. And God will go with you. He will talk to you and he'll be with you. But just stay in his word and talk to the Lord. He'll help you through any situation that you might get into. I love the Lord. I thank you for listening to us. And here's Milton now. Amen. Had one thing lined up and he gave me something else. I don't know. <laughs> God's good. That's the way he does. <laughs> uh, you know, we need to have a made up mind. We're going to serve God. When we <laughs> repent, you know, and, and when you repent, the, the, the Spirit of God, He comes and takes His abode with you. Yeah. And then we we are to seek after the gifts. Yeah. Uh, one the important gift that we should see, seek after is the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking mm -hmm. in tongues. It's where, you know, the Bible says we get power. That's right. After you, you receive that. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. If you haven't done, already received, you just ask God. You ask in Jesus' name. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And give me the, the gift of also not just sort of speaking in tongues, but to, to interpretation of tongues. You know, most time when we're praying in tongues, we just, it's between you and God. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's that, <clears throat> that holy language, what it is. Yeah. And it's, you don't know what you're saying. He could be moving mountains, uh, <clears throat> common this storms in your life coming your way. Jesus knows. God knows. Yep. From, from all the way down to when you get called on. Yeah. You're bound. He knows what's going on, what's coming down the road. And he knows what traps that Satan's trying to, to, to lay for you or kill yep. you. Satan would like to kill us. Yeah. But he can't do it. <clears throat> And, but now God watches over us. The Spirit of God takes care of us. He, he keeps us safe. Mm -hmm. We got angels all around uh, taking care of us. When trouble comes, uh, you know, a lot of times trouble will come and we won't even know it's around. Yeah. And God will intercede and move things around and, and you just go on through it. Then you can look back later and realize what was going on and the danger. But yeah. God kept you, took care of you. That's and he, right. He still does. He sees all. He knows all. <clears throat> you know, I've had things happen in my life. And then I can look back and I said, well, that was God yeah. taking care of me. That was That's God. Right. You know, I, I love the Lord and I praise him. He's an awesome God he, yeah. and he will take care of us. He loves us if we love him. If we sincere, keep this old flesh clean, our mind clean, and serve God, live according to his word, the way he'd have us to live. And all these gifts is yours. That's all right. these gifts are mine. Uh, the gift of prophecy. Paul said it's better to prophesy than anything else. You know, and you don't fear too much of it anymore. But we need to seek it. Ask God to help us to prophesy and say and do the things we need to do. That's you know, right. God amen. is awesome. He loves us. He wants us to live for Jesus, Him. You know, everybody goes to the ball game. They're jumping up and down and hollering. Well, you reckon God's there? <laughs> but now you go to church and you sit real still and don't jump up or raise your hands. I know God's there. He's, he's there in the church. <clears throat> we, you know, we need to give God praise. That's right. We need to lift up hands and 
jump up and down or whatever we need to Testify. do to praise the master. Yeah. To praise Worship him. him. We want him to be pleased with us. Yeah. I want him to be pleased with me. God is so awesome. I love him. And uh, thank God for him. I'll read you a little bit here in Revelations. We are living in the end times. We yes, need to we get are. ready. If you ain't ready, you need to get ready. And if you are ready, you need to stay ready. Having made up mind that I'm going to serve God no matter what. And I know that God's got, got my back. He's taking care of me. And I need to, to please him. Everything yeah. I can do to please him. That's right. Amen. <clears throat> we, you know, time is running out. I don't, I don't want to be found lukewarm. I want to be found well done, my child. And come on in. That's what I, I want to make it to heaven. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. Heaven is worth it all. I could, I could uh, receive billions of dollars and be filthy rich and have everything that I'd even think of. But if I ain't got Jesus, I ain't got nothing. That's right. And eternal life, that is forever. Mm -hmm. Eternal life is forever. And I'm planning on getting it and going to heaven. And, and but now, if if you don't go to heaven, you're going to the other place, That's and right. it's eternal too. And I definitely don't want to go to hell forever. I want to go to heaven. You know, I, and God's going to have things for us to do up there too. I can't yeah. wait to get there. I got a lot of loved ones there. Can't wait to see them. You know, I, I love Jesus. Uh, uh, Revelations 11th chapter says, and starting at the second verse, about the court, which is without the temple. Leave out, oh, he's talking about masonry. I'm going to read the third, start at the third verse. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. That's, and the two witnesses is Elijah and Enoch. Mm -hmm. That's the, two, that's the only two die. men that have not died. The Bible said we all want to die. Yep. <clears throat> These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them far, proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Think about that. And when it starts happening, uh, everybody's going to see it all over the world. It's going to be tele televised. It's going to be something. They, but they, I me mean, read on. said, And if any man will hurt them, far proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth, devoureth, devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must be in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified and Jesus was crucified in the, at Golgotha in oh. Israel and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entereth into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld, it, beheld them. <clears throat> and the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the raiment up were frightened, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh, come, cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord 
and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God, as if they were in heaven, <clears throat> praise God. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshiped God saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord, <coughs> God Almighty, <coughs> which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken of thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and, that, and the wrath is to come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, shall the great and shall small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in the temple the ark of his testimony, and there were lightnings and voices and thunders and and an earthquake and great hail. Praise God. Revelation is a big book. We need to read it more, study it, and live according to God's word. But uh, the main thing here is give your heart to God. Have a made up mind you're going to serve him and know that the end is coming. It's at the door. Mm -hmm. and that's all I got. God bless you. To be ready. Amen. That's right, you know. Yeah, God wants us to put him first above everything else, you know, and and we'll go and we'll go to Walmart and miss church. You know, you, God's not pleased with that. You know, we have to put God first in all things. I'm supposed to put God first before men, before my children, before anything. And then they come in, you know. But, uh, you know, we still love our family. But still, we're supposed to put God first. God is first in our lives and he will take care of us, you know. I love the Lord. I thank him for everything that he's given me. Everything that he showed me in his word, you know. He, he's such a good God, and He will take care of you. All we have to do is say, Here I am, Lord. Use me. And He will use you. You know, He'll give you a job to do. So get in His Word and read and ask Him what you what He wants you to do for Him. So, Amen. We love you. Have a good evening. Well, good night.